Welcome to the penultimate video of your AP Physics one year. So I don't know if you're happy or sad about that. I don't know if I'm happy or sad about it. But anyway, here we go. Angular momentum, arguably the most important topic in all of AP Physics one. It's a very important concept in the universe. Okay, so just as an object can have linear momentum, it can also have angular momentum. So there's basically an, a, a rotational equivalent of anything we did all year. So if you recall, linear momentum is uh, symbolized by P, I don't know why, and it's equal to mass times velocity. Well, angular momentum is symbolized with letter L, I don't know why, times the uh, rotational equivalence of these two. So instead of M, I have rotational inertia I. Instead of velocity V, I have angular velocity omega. So L equals I omega is basically the angular equivalent of this statement here. All right, now, like uh, linear momentum, it is a vector, uh, and so uh, we had to do we do have to consider direction when we're working with it. So uh, it, you just have to remember if something's rotating in opposite directions, one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. Now you can use the right hand rule to assign positiveness. Uh, remember, you curl your right hands and your thumb points away from the page that's positive, so counterclockwise being positive. But you're also welcome to set whatever direction you want to be positive, right? So. so uh, generally speaking, it's easy to say, well, whatever the initial direction motion, I'm going to call that positive. All right, we'll get to that later. <laughs> Let's just do a simple calculation of this, okay? So the wheel of fortune, I've seen it, but sometimes they have these, these large wooden discs they spin in order to do a game of chance. So I have a 10 kilogram wheel of fortune. Uh, it's, it's spinning about its center point. It's got a radius of two meters, uh, and it takes it uh, four seconds to complete one full rotation. What is the angular momentum of the Wheel of Fortune? So I'm going to say angular momentum is, is L equals I omega. So I is going to be uh, the rotational inertia of a solid disk. Why is Mr. Sensor always using solid disk? I don't know, but it's going to be 1 half M, which is 10, R squared, which is 2 squared, and times omega. Now, since it's, I'm going to use the right hand rule and say, okay, I'm curling my hands, my thumb's going into the screen. Uh, and therefore that makes it uh, a negative value. And it went all the way around once that's two pi radians, and it took it four seconds. Multiplies together, what you get is negative 31.4. And the units are kind of weird. We don't usually use them, but just so you know, kilogram meters per second, I'm uh, sorry, kilogram meters squared per second. That's what you're gonna get, all right? So you got kilograms, meters squared, radians, unitless, okay, divided by seconds. All right, but this is more the kind of problem you're likely to get. So what I have here is I have two disks, uh, and they are both rotating in a counterclockwise fashion. Fashion. I want to know uh, uh, what what would the angular velocity of the smaller disk have to be? In what the angular velocity of it have to be in order to have the same angular momentum as the larger disk? I've been doing this a long time. Okay, I keep making mistakes. Okay, all right. So I just want to know, like, basically, what does the angular velocity of this have to be in order for them to both have the same angular uh, momentum? All right. So let's just try this here. So. So this one and this one have to equal each other in terms of angular momentum. So the the uh, um, I omega for this has to equal the I omega for this. All right. So so they're both solid disks. So I have uh, one half of two m r squared times omega one is going to equal one half m rather than two m times the square of one half r times omega two. Done this a few times, so you know when I square this, I get one fourth r squared, uh, and I'm just gonna leave this one alone. So uh, I'm gonna uh, see. I'm just gonna um, <clears throat> multiply this through. So two times one half is one. Uh, one fourth times one half is one eighth. I'm gonna get rid of my m r squares, so I get uh, uh, omega one is equal to one eighth omega two. But since I want to put omega two had to be, it has to be eight times that of omega one. All right, which is not really intuitive when you first look at this. At least it's not to me, okay? Now, uh, just like with regular momentum, we talked about impulse, we can talk about angular impulse as well, all right? So remember with linear impulse, we'd say uh, force times time equals change in linear momentum, okay? Change in mass times velocity. Well, we're just gonna take this in, we're gonna swap it out with the rotational equivalence. Uh, so force is in angular, that would be torque. Remember, torque is basically force times radius times sine uh, uh, theta. There is no uh, rotational equivalent of time, okay? Uh, 
instead of mass, I'll use uh, angular, I'm sorry, ro rotational inertia I, and instead of velocity, I'll use omega. <clears throat> it's the same basic idea, okay? So torque times time is going to result in a change in angular momentum. I'm not going to work through a problem with that, though. I'm going to switch over here to the most important thing about today's lesson, which is conservation of angular momentum. So, so the state would be this. In the absence of an out, well, let's talk about regular momentum. In regular momentum, we say in the absence of an outside force, the starting momentum of a system equals the ending momentum of a system. We're going to say the same thing for angular momentum. We're going to say in the absence of an outside torque, the angular momentum you start with is the, is the angular momentum the system ends with. All right, so it's the same idea. It's just we're using torques and angular momentum. But here's a really classic example of this that a lot of us have thought about. So an ice skater spinning and she brings her hands in and we see her spin faster. Right? At, least, at least it looks like she's going faster. We'll see in a second. Same thing with, with people doing platform diving, uh, people doing trick ski jumps and snowboard jumps. You see them move their arms in and out to change how fast they, they spin about their axis. They change their angular velocity. So let's see why, why this works. It's something I think is commonly observed. So <clears throat> when her arms are out, she's sp spinning with a certain angular velocity, a certain number of, of radians per second. But because her arms are out, her mass is distributed far from her body. So, so since the mass is distributed far from the axis of rotation, that means the, the, uh, the I value is large. So I have this for my omega value, okay? Now what happens is when she brings her arms in, now her mass is closer to her axis of rotation. I mean, that's a, that's a square function, right? It's R squared. So, so that means that that results in a fairly significant change in her rotational inertia. But since L has to stay the same, that means that I have to have a, a similarly large change or increase in her, her omega, the number of revolutions she's going to make per second. It's something we've all watched, and so it just makes sense. Her There was no outside torque because the, the ice is you know, almost frictionless. So in the absence of an outside torque, she only had internal forces, so she was not able to change her her angular momentum, but she was able to, 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 to reduce her rotational inertia and thereby increase her angular velocity. It does make sense, all right? Uh, but let's just try to do it quantitatively, okay? So I'm just going to simplify this lady to uh, her mass is just now two spheres that are distance are apart from her axis of rotation. So here she is before. Her mass is farther away from her axis of rotation. Here she is after she brought her mass in, we'll just say, to one half R. I think she did better than that. So what we're saying is this. The, uh, the angular momentum that she starts with in the absence of an outside torque is going to equal the, the uh, final uh, angular momentum that she has. So in other words, I omega I initial equals I omega final. So let's just look at what her initial uh, uh, I omega is. Well, it's going to be 2m. This is the sum of the mr squared. So I have 2m and 2r squared. So it's going to be 2mr squared times omega initial. Now, i got to be careful over here. She still has 2m's, but now she has one half the r's for each of them. So she has 2m's times one half r squared times omega final. We've done this so many times, okay? So so I'm going to square this out. I don't know why I keep doing it. I'm sure by now you've got this one figured out, but I'm still doing it. I don't know why. All right. So I didn't change this one. I changed this one. And now, you know, I'm just going to say, you know what? Let's just get rid of the 2m r squared. I got 2m r squared here. I got 2m r squared here. I'm just going to divide both sides by 2m r squared. It gives me this. And I'm just going to rewrite it for the final. And, and lo and behold, uh, when, she, when she brought her arms in by one half, she increased her, her angular speed, uh, her angular velocity uh, by a factor of four. What about her kinetic energy? All right, now remember, uh, just like before, you do, in the absence of an uh, external torque, you must conserve momentum, but that does not mean that you can't change your mechanical energy. Uh, if, if, so there could be some, some, some source of energy being added to or taken from the system. So let's just see what happens here. It turns out that when her arms are out, she has a smaller rotational kinetic energy than when she brings in. And the reason is, remember, kinetic energy is uh, velocity squared, or in this case, angular velocity squared. All right, and that's, that's going to have a big effect. If you're going faster, it's going to have a big effect. Let's just see how it works. Again, we're going to go back to my my quantitative model of this uh, ice skater. It's not quite as not quite as fun to watch, right? It's not as, as artistic, but here you go. Remember, at first, with her arms out, 
she had an angular speed, an angular velocity of omega. But when she brought them in, we just saw that she ended up with an angular velocity of four omega. Right, that's what we just saw in the last example. So here we are. Her rotational kinetic energy was is one half uh, i omega squared. Same thing here. But let's just see what happens now. In this case here, she had uh, one half uh, i was was one half m r squared. So one half two m r squared. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, her i is is two m r squared, but it's kinetic energy, so it's one half. I am not going to redo this one again. I'm telling you that. All right. So, so that means then that her rotational kinetic energy to start with was just m r squared omega squared. But what is it on the other side when she brought her arms in? When she brought her arms in, she 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 completed four times as many uh, revolutions per second, and that should have some effect on. It. So uh, I have one half i omega squared, but her i is two m's that are one half r away. So one half one half r squared, and her omega is gone up to four omega, so and that has to be squared because it's 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 omega squared. So when I square this, I get sixteen. When I square one half, I get one fourth. Okay, uh, and so basically what I get then is is uh, two times one half is just one. Sixteen times one fourth is four. And look at this; she has four times more kinetic energy than she did when her arms were out. So and then basically she converted. Uh, internal energy in her in her her tissues, uh, basically chemical potential energy into into mechanical energy or a spin. But interestingly, notice that that her just as her omega went up by a factor of four, so did her kinetic energy. So kinetic energy doesn't have to be conserved. All right. Uh, uh, now now this here is a classic one. By the by the by the way, we're, we're, I'm going to have you do this one tomorrow. I'm going to have you do the other one too. I'm going to have you do the ballerina thing tomorrow with weights in your hands. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to have you do this one here too. Okay, so here's what I've got. Uh, I've got a person, and and at first this is 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 uh, the bicycle tire was uh, initially rotating the positive direction, kind of clockwise. But then the person flips it, so the, the there was an initial angular momentum to the system. The person sitting on a swivel chair. When the person flips it over, now it's 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 going in the opposite direction. So it, it, I reversed the sign of its angular momentum, but I didn't have any external force torque acting on the system. So I need to conserve the angular momentum of the system. So what happens is the person in the spin two, you're going to do this tomorrow and it's going to freak you out. It is super weird to do. Okay. So, so let's, so in other words, the, the initial mom, uh, angular momentum of the system was just that of the wheel. The person flipped the wheel over and now that new value plus the person's had to equal the initial. Now just let's just assign some values. Let's just say the initial one of the, uh, the initial angular momentum of the wheel was 10. Well, when the person flips over, it becomes negative 10. Well, 10 doesn't equal negative 10 unless you add 20 to it. So the person ends up getting twice as much angular momentum uh, as, as uh, the person. And you say, well, wait a second. Did this, doesn't this mean that the rotational kinetic energy goes up? It sure does. Okay, And you'll feel it happen. You'll feel yourself doing work when you do this. All right, now let's just look at this. I think this might be the last thing we're doing. Hopefully this will work fine. I'm just really getting tired of doing this for a long time. Let's look at a uh, rotational collision, okay? So, so basically I'm going to uh, drop a spinning disc of mass M on, that's have a, as a smaller radius onto a spinning disc of similar mass, but with a larger radius. So here's the larger one. It's got mass M radius R and it's rotating uh, counterclockwise at omega. We're going to use the right-hand rule and call that the positive direction. The other one has the same mass, but has half the radius and is rotating in the opposite direction at, at twice the speed. So, so negative two omega. And we want to notice when I drop these things on each other, what's going to be the final uh, uh, um, angular velocity of the system? So we'll assume that this big one is sitting on a frictionless surface. So there's no outside torque acting on the system. So really, if you think about this, this is just like saying M1V1 plus M2V2 equals M1 plus V1 is it times times uh, V final. So it's basically, what, what is this? This is a perfectly inelastic collision. They're going to end up rotating the same way. Okay, so let's just see what happens. All right, so there's friction between these two, but this is on a frictionless surface. So basically what I say is uh, the I omega of this device, of this object, plus the I omega of this object. So, so this uh, angle momentum plus this angle momentum is going to equal the final angle momentum, but it's going to be the combined I values 
times the final uh, uh, angular velocity. So let's just unpack this a little bit. So this this one here, what is this angular momentum? Well, it's one half mr squared because it's a solid disk times omega plus this is going to be uh, one half i omega, all right, but, uh, uh, but the i value in this case is m one half r squared and omega is negative two omega. And now on this side of the equation, I'm just going to combine their I values. So I have one half M R squared for this one and one half M one half R squared for that one times the final. So I just, I just substituted these I values into this and the omega value for this one into here. All right, well, let's just start tidying this up a little bit. Okay. So, you know, I keep doing this. So, you know what, if you, if you square one half R, you end up getting one fourth R squared. Okay. And so I just did it on both sides. I don't know why I'm holding your hands on this. I'm your big boys and girls. You could do this on your own. But now what happens is, all right, let's just go ahead and, and multiply things through a little bit. Okay, well, what have I got here? I got basically if what if I take, if I basically if I say uh, one half of, of one fourth is one eighth times negative two is negative one fourth. Okay, uh, and this is one half. All right, so I come over here and I got over here, what I've got is one half MR squared. And over here, I've got one eighth MR squared. So when I add one half to one eighth, I get five eighths MR squared times omega final. And here I have one half MR squared omega minus uh, one quarter MR squared omega. So one half minus one quarter is a quarter equals five eighths MR squared. Let's just get rid of our MR squares. And so I end up with one fourth of the initial omega equals five eighths of the final one. And I just rewrite that for uh, the final angular velocity. And I see it's two fifths of the original. <laughs> it's, it's a little tedious because you got to keep track of those MR squares. Okay. But other than that, it's just the same thing as, as, as any kind of inelastic collision we did before. Now, uh, I know this looks like somebody's smiling, but that's not what it is. You'll see what it's saying. It's like, this is a classic problem that you're often going to get. Uh, and it is a child standing on, in America, we call it a merry-go-round. It's like a rotating platform. Okay. It's, so it's, it's this, this you can, you, that you can ride around on. Okay. So the child is at rest on the spinning platform. So there is zero initial angular momentum here, but the kid's going to start to run in a counterclockwise di direction from position A to position B. And that's basically, uh, it's, 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 it's pi radians that the person ran. When a person does this, they're going to exert a, a force torque rather on the opposite direction on this disc, making it spin the other way. It has to, because otherwise we would end up you know, with a, a change in our angular momentum and we can't. Okay. So what we want to know is if the child runs pi radians, what is the angular displacement of the merry-go-round? Like how far does it move the other way? Well, let's think about this. So I got the child is one half m r squared, uh, so m times one half r squared. So it's basically, the uh, uh, for the child the uh, um, rotational inertia is one quarter m r squared, and for the disc it's a solid disc of radius of mass m, and uh, I think we said mass two m. So it has twice the mass. I think I said the other one. I wasn't paying attention. It's got twice the mass. Okay, so I end up getting. Uh, one half two m r squared. Uh, so here you go. Uh, and so basically, what we see is the child has a quarter of the i value of the platform. So what happens then is when the child starts running, the child is going to have basically one half m r squared times omega is going to be the child's uh, angular momentum. Well, this has to have the opposite. So since this has an I of MR square instead of one quarter MR square, it must have an omega of negative one quarter omega. So this is going to be the opposite of this. So, so this, this, this is supposed to say plus, and I'm not going to change it. This plus this equals zero. I apologize. I'll fix that in the, in the um, slide presentation. All right. So this plus this equals zero because this, this has to be negative. So what that means then is this, if the child goes pi radians, because they ran for a certain amount of time, since this is going one fourth as fast, it's going to go one quarter as many radians. So it's going to go one quarter of the radians. Okay, there you go. Made it through this finally. Oh, sorry, it was a long one.